Hi, and welcome to this tutorial on correctly formatting your dates in Excel. My name is Ian Littlejohn from ExcelBusinessIntelligence.com, and I look forward to taking you through this quick tutorial just showing you how we can format our dates and make sure we can use some great functionality that's available in Excel for us to use with dates. So let's just start off with an example. Let's just take our C column over here. And let's say, for example, we've got two dates. We want to use, say, the 26th of June. 2014 and now we want to calculate how many days was it until the 10th of October 2014. Okay now with this you can see my two dates are there. If I was to take the later date which is 10th of October I can then minus the earlier date the 26th of June 2014 and you'll see it'll come back and tell me it's 106 days between the 10th of October and the 26th of June. This is fantastic we can easily do calculations. But if our dates are not correctly formatted, so for example, if so, I had the 26th of June 2014 and the 10th of October 2014. Now, if I tried to do the same calculation with this, let's just take that and minus that, you see, we'll come back with a value error. So let's just understand why, what, with one set of dates, we can get an answer of 106 days and the other we get an error message. Now immediately what you can probably see on your screen is the fact that the two dates that I put in the first are actually formatted to the right hand side of my cell. Okay, whereas the two dates that I put over here are actually formatted to the left hand side of my cell. Now this gives me a little bit of insight into when Excel is actually correctly understanding my dates. So if I take my dates over here at 2606, and if I go to my formatting, what you'll see is under number currency accounting all of these options here is exactly the same information, the 2606 2014. Now this means that Excel is actually seeing my data as, uh, as text. Whereas if I go over here to 2014 and I go to my formatting, you'll see over here firstly that I have a number. Over here I have my long date and my short date, which is great. This is the type of information I want to be able to see. However, the secret behind understanding how Excel works with dates is this number over here. So we'll see that this is 41,816. Now this is actually the number of days since the 1st of January 1900. So Excel actually stores all dates as numbers, which allows it then to do all the great formulas and all the great calculations that we're able to do. And that made it easy for it to be able to work out the number of days between the two dates that we have over here, because it was really just deducting one number from the other. If we go to the 10th of October, you'll see that that's 41,922. So therefore, the difference between these two dates is actually 106. And all Excel was doing was actually calculating that, that minus. So over here, while we have text, we're not able to actually do these calculations. Over here, once we've got these numbers, just to show you that 1st of January, if we go 1st of January 1900, and you'll see that's number one. So that just goes to show the 1st of January 1900 is actually day number one. Okay, so this means for many people out there that they often see their dates being formatted to the left-hand side. And the question comes about how do we now change this so we can actually correctly see the dates? And one of the ways we can do is we can use the equals date formula. Equals date formula is very powerful. allows us to be able to create dates out of text. So to be able to work with the equals date formula, we need to know what is the year, what is the month, and what is the day. So often what I do is I can take the, the formula, for example, and if I was to say equals left as a formula, take my input text here, which is C8, and say I want the leftmost two characters. Okay, so I've got equals left, C8, and I take two characters and press enter. You see that it returns a 26. So this actually gives me the day of the month that we're working with. If I now want to get the month, and the month you'll see is actually in the middle of the text. So what I do is I use an equals mid formula. So say so where is my text? Again, my text is in C8. Okay, now it asks me where do I start the number? So in this case, it's actually starting on character number four. Please make sure you count the full stop actually as, a, as an option there. So I'm going to say four. And then I want another two characters as well. So in this one, it's equals mid C8, comma four, comma two. Okay, yeah, there we actually have our June now is 06. The last one that I need is my year. So I use an equals right formula. 
And again, I can use C8 as the input and ask me how many characters. In this case, I actually want four characters. Okay, because I want all four from the right hand side of the cell. Okay, so I've got 2014 now. So equals left, equals mid to get the middle part, and equals right to get the right part. Okay, then as I said, I can use an equals date formula. So I'm going to say equals date, and then it'll say what is my year. And I can actually say F8 is my year, comma, E8, comma, D8. Okay, so we now have a correctly formatted date. If I just widen this a bit. Okay, so you'll see equals date, F8, E8, and D8. Now if I go there, you'll see that this is correctly 41,816. If we actually go to our date here, see also 41,816. So this is great. This is the date we've got. Now you'll see, see over here in my formula bar, I've actually got the formula. So what I often do is I do a copy and then I just paste and I use paste values over here. And then you'll see it's 41,816 because it's the actual formula. However, over here now, I could just go and then use my, I say long date as my formula, as my formatting, and then I've correctly got my format. Okay, so that shows it correctly. Okay, the other method that I'd like to show you to quickly be able to change your dates is if you see over here with this date is that it's actually using a full stop as a delimiter. So we can actually use that to break these parts into the different aspects. And then again, I could use my equals date formula. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my data. I'm going to use my text to columns. So if I choose text to columns over here, you'll see that I can say that my text is delimited. Click on next. In this case, it's not a tab or a semicolon or a comma. I'm going to say other. I'm going to say it's a full stop. Now you see straight away that Excel picks up the full stop and it breaks up my data. So I can click text again on that. Now the big part here is to make sure we change our destination. So we're going to click on change your destination. We're going to say we want it to go into D9. Okay, click back on that and click finish. So now you'll see that my text has actually been broken up into my day, my month, my year which again allows me to quickly and easily be able to say equals date my year f9 my month e9 and my day is d9 okay so equals date f9 e9 d9 okay again now you can see it's correctly formatted and if we go back to our home menu we can see now in our date it's now a number again and again, we could use a copy and we could use a paste values again. And again, it will bring the number across there and we could then just use our formatting to put in long date. And again, now if we were to select these two and just say, okay, let's take this one minus this one, like we did in the first example, 106 days. And if we copy that formula across, so it's doing the same thing on our h9 minus h8 you can see it's done that as well okay so hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial and it's shown you how you can change your dates in excel to be correctly formatted thank you mm -hmm.